Always scared, Daniel's son. Mia. Hello, this is the communitary. Dan Harmon speaking. Fighting. Line? Yeah, but you like karate. Right. Here's another great episode of television so? I created Chang, the with the help of a few people. I shouldn't go. No, maybe I'm a bad actor. Being good is a fraction of acting. It takes um, discipline and confidence. Discipline. Confidence. This is an old okay. sitcom formula. Always scared, Daniel's son. Miyagi hates fighting. Line. What? Come on. Uh, yeah. So, what needs to be said about this episode? Well, one thing we talked about in doing season six, it's like, we, there always has to be a Chang conversation at the beginning of every season, because I... I've never gotten a handle on how to properly use him. Um, he's fondly remembered as the Spanish teacher, the crazy Spanish teacher. Could have kept him that way. Sony certainly urged urged us to keep it that way. I didn't want them to be taking Spanish for eight years. I thought it was... I, I, did, I, didn't, I didn't want to... Worse than that, I didn't want them to take Spanish for two years and then have the switch to them not taking Spanish in year three be like, oh, you jumped the shark. Like, I kind of like, I prefer to jump sharks early so that you don't perceive them as shark jumping. Um, and so I just, I didn't, I had them not take Spanish again the second year. So it's like, okay, what do we do with Chang? And that spiraled us into, okay. We don't know what to do with this character, plus the actor is unique. He is Ken Jong. he's amazing. He's, like, he's a strong flavor to add to any scene. He's, like, he, he com comes up with new ways to say standard lines. <laughs> and, and, like, a lot of the times it's the, the results are better than you could have written and then other times the results are like wait why did he say it that way that kind of interferes with the next line and, and it, you know he's a loose cannon he's which is the, and I when I have a situation like that I like okay then the character should be a loose cannon because that way we can write what we know and people can refer to Chang on camera as a loose cannon you know he can have that identity within the within the family um so then that results in a lot of like crazy Chang stories um settling into okay he's really actually mentally ill like let's, let's say that that's the thing with Chang then season four happens but we'll talk about that later and season five we finally started to get some amazing results and what it came from and Ken and I have talked about this in, on panels and in interviews like Ken, you know, he's coming into his own. He's got his own show now, and, 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 and he he was always a star, and he, you know, there was a point where he wrote an email to, to me and Chris and said, I want to, I want to, like, I want the character to be to be taken more seriously, and I just, I just want, I just want to do more things with him, and all this, all this kind of stuff that you would look at as a producer, you know, coming from an actor and be like, ah, screw you, you're an actor, start, take your paycheck and shut up. And I'd be lying if I said that wasn't always my reaction to anybody who wants anything from me. But, uh, but, but, we, we, you know, we, I took the text from that email and I put it into dialogue that Chang does in the Bear Down for Midterms episode. He, he just says the same thing to the group that, that, that Ken was saying to me. Um, and always were. And and Ken did the scene in the Bear Down for Midterms episode, and it was it was amazing. You know, he he was like crying, and he was doing a great job acting, and it was really effective because the character's still nuts. Um, but part of the complication with nuts people is that they are still human beings, and that they can appeal to you in an emotional level, and then they do something nuts, and then they appeal to you, and then they do something nuts. Um, and so I thought we really hit some pay dirt there. And I, and I felt like, and then you can see it in other episodes in season five where he's like, the, you know, people just like, I found that like act, other characters saying to him, act like you're serious, act like you're serious. Like if, if, if someone in the, in the, in the scene says act, act serious or something like that, or calls upon him to be dramatic, then you get out of Ken Jong, you get this crazy dramatic performance. 
So the idea of his character having acting aspirations was something that, that we wanted to pursue in season six so that we could keep trying to repeat that success. Um, anyways, I've talked about that enough, but that's a big part of this episode, and I, I thought it was a real success. Like, the idea that, you know, Chang is going through this, and we don't we don't know what to make of it, and it's through Annie's eyes, because Chang's crazy, and now he's working in this crazy job with this crazy boss, and the crazy boss is abusive, but normal human people have have emotional connections to crazy stuff, too. Annie wants to be an actor. Annie thinks she's good. That's Annie's connection. And then she finds out, no, well, crazy people have their own crazy rules. And you either have to shut the whole thing down or you have to just walk away from it and say, well, I'm not crazy. Um, and that's the hardest thing sane people can, uh, you know, can be asked to do sometimes is just leave us crazy people alone. Just leave us the fuck alone <laughs> if you don't, if you want to be so sane. Go away. Um, anyway, so this other story, you know, I intended this to be a heartbreaker, the baby bird thing. I wanted to get Elroy um, alone with Abed. That's pretty obvious, isn't it? That's Manzukis. Daniel, son, why you won't learn karate? Hang on a second. It's amazing. You should listen to his podcast with Paul Shear. Oh, Paul and June and, and Jason do this amazing podcast called "How Did This Get Made?" Where they just—it sounds like a like a like an old old concept that that doesn't need to be a podcast. But they pick apart bad movies, and, but it is amazing. Daniel Son, why you want? Okay, no, sorry, no. You read Daniel Son. You read Miyagi. Um. We'll do scene seven, Miyagi's office. Are you the repairman? Uh, yeah, so we, <laughs> Allison gave us a very broad range of, <laughs> of Annie what? acting. After, after. You know, what does Annie think good acting is? How much is too much? And then also the challenge there was like, we want to mislead that he, that he's interested in Annie as an actor and not Chang, and that Chang's just part of the package because of his race. So we wanted to mislead that, but the, the actor playing the director is sitting two feet from them, so the eye line was a little bit of a problem. I am not letting you sabotage yourself. Uh, I think we like blew up the frame and. And like Sidney Poitier or Meg Ryan before you, you were cast for race. It's what the actor does with the role they get that matters. All right? You're right. All right, IT lady, how goes it? I found your problem. And? I'll need a little time to fix it. Wow, need time to fix it? You sound just like you work in IT. I've I'm, uh... The school board. I'm not gonna lie. I'm very disappointed well, in the execution the of the Abed Elroy so story, and in, in terms of like the location shooting, I, I I was already overwhelmed, and the fact that I mean this this story was written to be like, okay, this is the heartbreaker story of the three. This is a pretty epic episode that doesn't immediately announce itself as epic, but. You know, I wanted outdoor scenes where they're sitting in lawn chairs and they're guarding this bird's nest. And like, what I got was the two of them sitting in lawn chairs directly underneath the bird's nest that earlier they said they weren't supposed to go near. And they're inside the tape that they they put around it. It, it, it really throws me. Um, and there's not a lot of emotional... ...of your role in society. Weight to the story, I think, as a direct result of just not, not, not splurging and going, you know, like widening out those exteriors, like going somewhere that looks like outside. It could be good for Greendale for one of our um, school boards. I mean, the fact that you believe this is a great scene. I mean, 
I was really happy with the result. You know, this is something we talked about in season six was like, you know, Jeff is Jeff is moving up from being just, you know, the the wacky leader of the study group. He's now he's on the faculty and now suddenly he's taking on more of an administrative capacity. So you're bringing in this other character in pageants. Like now you have this. This can be an element of your show is the, you know, bad dean and the qualified dean assistant and Jeff, whose paycheck gets ca uh, punched by the bad school, all trying to figure out how to make choices together. There's a little bit of a WKRP in Cincinnati kind of feel to me for, in that regard. Like, All right. This is a pretty basic scene. No real subtext. Let's just get it up on its feet. There's no wrong answers. Okay? By the way, uh, Manzouk is his assistant in this uh in these scenes is johnny pemberton very underutilized johnny pemberton um he's an episode of my podcast harm in town he's he's a he's, a, he's, a, he's a really really great comedic actor really funny guy um should be pretty obvious this story is inspired <laughs> more than inspired uh by uh, the trailer for the movie Whiplash. <laughs> um, I never saw the movie and, uh, until long after we made this episode, but I had seen the trailer in theaters, and I, I was so compelled by the trailer. The question, I mean, I, uh, you know, the movie's fine. Um, movie sure teaches you a lot about drums and jazz, but uh, the trailer, I, th I was like, wow. The, the, somebody's finally making this movie about asking the question whether or not um, creative people are supposed to go to a dark place. Is it part of the job, or is that, or or is the job an excuse for dark people to do bad things? You know, is he bullying? Obviously, he is. It's a sitcom, and we had to make it, so he's <laughs> genuinely bullying him. But I mean, you know, what he, 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 guys like this will claim, oh, I have to abuse him in order to get the good performance out of him. Is he right? Is he wrong? I, I mean, it's that that is what I saw in the Whiplash trailer. I was like, wow, we, I would really like to ask that question too. And if Chang's going to be an actor, let's 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 do this. Yeah, we do. We have some exciting news for you. Your own Dean Craig Pelton. One of our writers, Matt Lawton, is obsessed with Karate Kid. Obsessed. Every time, I think not only every time Karate Kid came up would he reveal this ridiculous level of trivial knowledge about the production of Karate Kid, but, but also anytime anything other than Karate Kid came up, he'd like bend the conversation to Karate Kid. Um, and then reveal trivial knowledge about it. So it's like, okay, either this season's going to have an episode of Kar <laughs> that involves Karate Kid, or or we're wasting a lot of money on Matt Lawton because um, this guy has got he's got a he's got a passion for this thing. Um, and it worked. It was great. We tap, you know, it was like, like oh, well, what if he did like a Karate Kid thing? And and Matt lit up and and you know was a fountainhead of guidance in constructing the story for that. But irrelevant! It gets better! <laughs> oh, 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 good. <laughs> We're so happy. I love this guy that's playing Diego. Gay people are scum. Okay, don't play that card with me, young man. I make gayness look like Mormon. I really wanted to bring him back. Um, but I never got a chance to. I never knew. I mean, people talk, but I'm sure. Um, I don't know. I just I, I, I find it really funny. Like I I, I, I notice in TV and movies that um, modern gay characters, if they're in a couple, the other partner is very often a handsome, stubbled Latino man. Uh, like if it's, it's sort of like a writer's like styrofoam peanut that he uses to complete a gay couple <laughs> it's like it, it's if you want to if you want to feel like you understand gay people on the page um you kind of tend to like like well he should then his partner is like it's definitely not going to be this old white guy with a with a with a golf club 
um, you know, in a comb over uh, or a or a in a Hawaiian shirt is like you know lisping and mincing. He's going to be this strong, stubbled, you know, Latino guy. I, I it's it, it and I believe I'm telling you, there's examples, and I I. I that's why I, we 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 wrote this this character as Diego, and we got we got that great guy and put in a great performance. And then afterwards, it was a, you know when I was watching Empire, and once again, like the the gay son, you, you go to his place and he's got the he's got the handsome he's got the Diego uh, next to him. Then I'm not hitting you. You are the worst actor I've ever directed, and I directed both Walberts from the top. Danny does a bit with the four Sanders, Miyagi is amused, and Kenny gets me another goddamn cup of coffee with six Splendas in it. I love Splenda. I mean, look what Ken's doing. It's great. Like, and by the way, Ken definitely for real pissed. Like, did not want to have stuff poured on him. Ken has weird shit about physical stuff, which is insane to me because he <laughs> began his career jumping naked out of a trunk and we use him on the show, covering himself in Vaseline and diving through things. I think at some point he started to think, well, is this what I am? Am I like some animal that you pull out of a crate and make do crazy physical shit? I think. But I also think, I also think like something happened to him on season four. I never really delved into it. Like, 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 like you're having him do physical stuff, and I think he might have hurt himself or something. I'm not sure. But he be, he became a little, you know, he, just, he didn't want to do physical stuff, which is fine. I don't, If an actor doesn't want to do anything in particular, they don't have to do it. Uh, it as long as the result of me, like, changing course on on paper, as long as that then isn't met with, well, why is why is my character now the guy that refuses to do physical stuff? Well, because you don't want to. Um, well, I don't like, I mean, I didn't want you to write it in the script. Well, okay, now we have a problem. Now you're the, okay, so can your character be the guy that complains a lot? Um, because if not, like, I don't know what to do anymore. And that's, that's when, that's when stuff goes awry with the process. And that is not the case with Ken. Ken, Ken wrote an email and said, can, can, can Chang be taken more seriously? And I put the email in the script and he, he rewarded that with, an incredible performance and we rewarded that with more like stuff but but he really like when he's getting that coffee poured on his head he's he's pissed like show me wax off but he's doing it you know he, he did it for the show back on you your ancestors are clawing their way deeper into the earth to get away from you you make me embarrassed to have thumbs i can see air quotes around you <laughs> That's a very funny one. I can see air quotes around you. I didn't write that. Oh, look. There's nobody here. Oh, it's so dusty. It's almost like nobody. This is a lot of stuff like this. There's just like a big list. Like writers. I, that's what the writer's room is really good at. You just go, give me a list of things. You <laughs> just verbal abuse. It's fine. You can go. I'm not bluffing. You can't make an actor more talented by yelling at them. And if you don't stop, your lead character is going to walk. Lead? You play Danny LaRusso. Well, the Karate Kid. See, I think that's a, I think that's a great moment. I don't know. I'm fascinated with this dynamic. You can't make an, act, uh, uh, an actor more talented by yelling at them. Her, her act of heroism, on the surface, is respectful of Chang, but it's, it's based on all sorts of presumptions, and one of them is that Chang isn't talented. Ben, because he has the sadness. And, and that she is. This show great. And people like to be nice when they think that they're on top. And suck it out you know, a uh, so yeah, no, nobody makes a better misogynist than, uh, than a, a, a guy who was uh, called himself a feminist 10 years ago. Um, because oh my God. You're like doing a terrible Vinny it might have been easier 10 years ago. You're not capable of anything better, so and then when stuff gets real... The rubber meets the road, and so it was. You know, oh, it was con your your feminism was contingent upon the concept of you being the one that's in charge of when women are taken seriously. And now that you're not in charge, now that the idea is that actual feminism would involve you being taken down a notch. Now you're a misogynist. Uh, stuff like that's just my go-to example. Like a lot of people have built-in conditions that you're not perceiving to their respect for you. Do it because I'm gay. What so watch out for that. Gay? Oh, that did not just get said to us. You are gay, you are openly gay, and we love it. But now... <laughs> 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 
incentives for appointing you than we ever did from gays from not having one of you. Yeah, and the gays aren't coming to your side. You know why? Because the whole point is to get a job by being gay and then to do as good a job as the normals. That's what the gays want. <laughs> I'm not a gay dean. Whoa! No, cool, <laughs> I really like the scene. I mean, it's it's not moralizing about anything. It's just figure it out, gay dean. Figure it out. You know, it's not. I, 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 <laughs> Diego. I, I, I just, I, yeah, I leave this, the, the social political satire to to better writers at that. I, 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 I just, I just like to, you know, like point out what's weird about situations as we evolve as a as a species you know like we put ourselves in strange situations baby birds your moves stand down stand down and this scene, yeah i mean again i just like the unarmed black man versus one unarmed openly gay d if these guys were out in a field now move that nest and there was a standoff you know and he's like Look, this is, uh, I don't know, that, that, every, everything is kind of, it's in neutral, and it should be in third gear. Those are, 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 I think those are puppet birds down there. I think those are practical puppet birds. So that's, that's Ken Jong wanting to kill himself. This is successfully a heartbreaker. I like this. I mean, but it really could have cracked your chest up, but, like, I could have murdered you. But I showed you mercy. Keith David standing next to Abed is just, like... And there was a... We, we, we cut out of it before he... Elroy puts a hand on Abed's shoulder and then walks into the camper, and I can't remember why we cut... There was some some very subtle reason why it was it was a little too much. I, I, I really can't remember. I said something about Abed. It's like, I didn't want Abed to show much. I have called this press conference because I have been less than honest with the public. You know me as the openly gay dean of Greendale Community College, but that doesn't even begin to describe what I really am. I belong to one of the most marginalized and least openly honest groups in America. So remember, this is Jim Rash and his partner Nat directing him. Politician. Now, what does that mean? Are politicians like you? Well, we look like you, but we will say and do whatever we have to in order to acquire and keep our jobs. It means nothing I say, and very few of the things I think can be trusted. I am tired of being in this particular closet, so I am coming out now. I only hope that you can accept an openly... I'm not sure. Is it, I mean, in music, like, again, you guys that asked, well, where's the music? I understand. Well, there it is. Did it help? I don't know. I don't know. I left it in for a reason, but... Just faster if I get to my office this way. We don't need pictures of this. <laughs> that's, and that's, that's all, Jim. You know, and imagine that scene without that. That would have been a death blow to the to the episode like it would have been too serious at that moment because then you'd be going right into this scene uh, but it's <laughs> Jim adding that came here to apologize well I hope your apology comes with a beak and hollow bones and a special magnet in his head it uses to migrate you skipped wings insects have wings I'm sorry I'm sorry Abed <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the runner is there two of them died there's one left he's hanging on but I'm worried he's turning into a symbol of my own innocence Isn't Chang's plate? <laughs> uh, Abed never actually forgives the dean. Oh, dial it back, Annie. Oh. Well, I'm definitely in. It'll be interesting to see how his fake crying is different from his real crying. Well, I'm a big fan of the performing arts, but I'll go to Chang's play anyway. <laughs> He's so proud of himself. Karate Kid adaptation. Karate Kid adaptation. Karate Kid adaptation. This was Jim's idea. He, he's actually not inviting the dean. Um, I mean, I, yeah, it was, uh, so then he. Karate Kid adaptation? Okay. Ah, I'm, I'm catching up. But I think it's, I think it's notable that, yeah, the Dean doesn't, Abed doesn't forgive the Dean. Director 
actors have a saying. Actors are worthless. Empty-headed homogenous. Abed's not a big forgiveness guy. Right Abed role. makes decisions about your value <laughs> um, and your liability your, right versus role. your benefit. And if and you are a person your that, world changes. You're welcome. that would could take your trust and turn it into dead birds, uh, you, then Abed's going to make the calculation that he, he needs to pull back from you to keep himself and, and birds safe. You must be the new people in apartment 20. <laughs> I really love the tone of this stuff. This is that Jim, Jim, Jim and Nat did. I mean, it's like, I would. I, we're often referencing Wes Anderson for this episode. I, I, I wanted the episode to feel like a, a little Wes Anderson movie, um, complete with the Wes Anderson's love of the idea of stage adaptations. Um, Come ask Lee Boy alone. But also just the kind of, you know, it's, 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 it's maudlin and quirky, the episode. And, uh, and just get, and, and the fact that this, it's structured differently for that reason. Um, it's, it's supposed to be Wes Anderson-y in its structure. It's, it, 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 the, the stories resolve tragically at the end of the second act. And the third act is just... Epilogue. It's barely resolution. It's it, except in that it just brings everyone together around something, and <laughs> uh, I love the I, lo I just I, I love I love that real side of Abed. Um, the the and so you just get to you just get to watch this performance, and it, because it's there's this questions surrounding the Chang story have to do with this idea and creativity is do the ends justify the means you know can you if you if your if your methodology is uh hurtful uh if you're if you're for instance a showrunner that will never get an overall deal with any network or studio because you're known as a high maintenance uh guy that doesn't take a lot of notes if you hand scripts to the department heads at the last minute subjecting them to tortures beyond any hell they could imagine in their craft it, and then if the if the episode's good d does that make it all better or should the episode just been a you know five percent worse and uh, yeah and I'm, I'm asking that question not uh, not rhetorically like it's but i also don't want an answer because i i, I mean I, it's just a fascinating question to me and what we're finding out in this story is that I think the implication is it wasn't worth it. Yes, if it's good, if the end product is good, I lost the button. then it was okay for Chang to have coffee spilled on his head and get yelled at and made feel bad. Hey. Hey guys. Because now that whole audience got made happy. Thank you for making me do this. By the way, I know I don't yell at people who pour coffee on their head. That's not what I'm saying. I'm jealous. <laughs> oh, no, no, don't be. Believe me. I sit in my dress room and all I dream about I just write really slow. <laughs> I'm just a terrible, terrible writer. That's my abuse. But now he gets to go to the special actor bar. I'll see you guys in school. It was kind of a thing in theater in Milwaukee. Where I was like in theater back then. I was like, there was like a cool bar that the actors went to after a black box show. And like you kind of, you'd invite a couple people from the audience, but you were really going there to hang out with the actors and talk about acting. Lady. My lord. And then I'll go to the the scene bar. We are gathered here today to celebrate the release of this bird into these skies. That it's now fully formed wings may find purchase. I think Matt Roller and Carol Kolb, I wanna say, are responsible for the for the charm of, of the of this scene. I think they really took this one and, and ran with it. Kept me from getting email for a week. <laughs> and that chirp you do when you want more bread. I hope that's accurate. I hope. And now everyone, please put on your cat masks and finger wings. All the writers uh, on any season of Community. With these cat masks. Are mind you that this place is no do all the, the same amount of really difficult work on every single episode. 
I want to stress that. I know that you guys see writing credits and you're tempted to go, oh, well, this guy wrote this episode, this guy wrote that. It's It's really only vaguely uh, relevant, those, those credits. It's The credit is just the fact that, you know, a writer on Community just deserves to walk away with a writing credit because they worked their ass off on all the episodes. And, and they're just sort of the captain of the, of, the, of the team for the episode that has their name on it. You know, they're the, the, because their name's going to be on it, so they're a little more incentivized to make sure it's not a piece of crap. Um, but you don't know that, that one writer is funnier than another if their episode is with their name on it is funnier than another. You don't know that. Um, it's, and that cuts both ways. <sighs> I just... I want to make that clear because of the stuff I see sometimes with fans talking about, like, uh, like, oh, this writer clearly screwed this thing up. No way, man. It's always me. Always. If something's bad. It's my doing. <laughs> um, and when things are good, it's because all the writers are good. <clears throat> Here's your music. You like music? See? This season had music. 